Hi guys, and welcome back to the living room makeover. If you don't know, last week we started and we built bookshelves on the side of the fireplace. And we're going to continue today with all of the finishing details so that way we can get to painting because I want to pick my color. Today we are starting <laughs> with crown molding. And if you saw me do the living room makeover at my mom's old house, crown molding basically wanted to make me give up on life. So I watched a bunch of videos, I'm still confused, and I'm still praying that it works out because a lot of the comments were like, I still don't understand this. Apparently crown molding is like one of the toughest things to do, which is wild because you would think it'd be simple, like it's just trim, but there's, you have to turn things upside down and do things different ways, like it's just crazy. So we're gonna attempt crown molding, and if I can't get it, I don't know what I'm going to do because I don't really want to hire out two little pieces of trim because all I'm doing is doing the molding, the top of these bookshelves. Now I would have loved to have picked like a chunky molding and I just feel like it would have made these bookshelves feel so ornate and regal. But unfortunately this is the size of the molding in this room and so I feel like I need to match it because otherwise I'd have to change the entire room. One that gets pricey and two I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to do this. <laughs> so also I have a pencil in my ear to make me feel like have you guys take me more seriously? Or is it a pencil or a pen? It's a pen, it's a pink pen. Okay, so you probably won't take me seriously. But anyways, you guys, so what I wanna do is get this molding started and then next is the doors and I need to put shelves and there's still so many things to do, you guys. It's so crazy. You think like building the bookshelves would be the hard part, but I feel like that was the easiest part. Like I would rather build another bookshelf than attempt this. But anyways, let's get to it because we got lots to do. should be my two outer edges and I use a piece of old trim and a piece of new trim because if I mess up I don't want to waste all the new stuff so <laughs> did I do it I did an outside trim do you see so this is gonna, oh you guys this is, oh my gosh <laughs> thank you Jesus okay this is gonna go on the outside of the top of the bookshelf ignore my messy living room back there it's under construction obviously but yay outside figured out <laughs> okay so that was the easy part I'm pretty sure the inside corner is gonna be harder because I'm also working with older flatter trim so I have to figure out coping as well which is when you basically it'll look different but when I have to like kind of cut off this edge so it'll go against the other one <laughs> you guys so this is exciting this is like half the battle okay okay that was really easy it makes me feel like the second part's gonna be really hard okay Okay, so that wasn't as bad as I thought. I'm gonna link two videos down below that were very helpful and super simple. Honestly, what I'm finding is it almost feels like a lot of backwards math, even though it's like math, but it's not math, because it's like a lot of upside down and turning around and co the corners just are opposite to what you think they would be. So I think that's the biggest thing with crown molding is it just really makes your brain have to think backwards almost. And so I only have four pieces of wood that I have to cut and it's taken me a while, so it's not hard per se it's just a lot of thought and I think that's why a lot of people shy away from it so it's definitely something that can be done I think it's definitely an art for those who do it very very well and it's not something I want to have to do anytime soon <laughs> so I'm happy that I'm figuring it out but for the most part well okay so I have an outside edge so this is the one that's sorry we live close to a police department so this is the outside edge so these are just gonna line up outside of the bookshelf like so beautiful so lovely and then the this one is the one that's gonna butt up to a pre-existing just flat trim. So what I need to do is cut away the back of it here and that is called coping and I have to use a coping saw. And again, I'm gonna link the video down below that I watched. I'm not showing you a DIY because I'm not very good at it. But basically what we're gonna do is get rid of all of this excess wood here so it can hopefully just lie flatter on top of the trim. Sorry, it's very loud outside but my kids are watching a movie. So anyways, I hope that made sense. And if not, watch the videos down below. They explain it much better than I ever could.
good day? Day. So mommy's doing a good day. So we are just gonna put the edge banding to make this plywood door look more expensive <laughs> all the way around. And all you do is iron it on and then cut off any excess with a like a razor blade or whatever. A razor blade? No, what am I talking? With a box cutter. Oh, I got a roof. Got a roof? Yeah, a lot. door it makes it look like a solid piece of wood as opposed to dirty little plywood. We love you, we love you, thank you for what you do. Okay, so as you might be able to tell, maybe not, it's not a good angle, but my doors are too short for the face frame that I did, hang on. Okay, so <laughs> I measured my doors and I measured them to have half an inch extra on each side, so that way, in, in the top and the bottom, right and left, so that way it would cover its area. But unfortunately, I didn't know, because it's my first time doing this, that the hinge itself took like an inch, so it pulled the door more to the left. And because of that, I now have this gap right here. This is this should be sitting like halfway-ish onto my face frame middle plate, but it's not. <laughs> so I already cut all my wood. I already had a mini meltdown, yes. <laughs> Thankfully, I had enough wood that I can recut these two doors. Unfortunately, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the other ones for right now. So I find that it's best when it's not working to just stop and either take a break or move up to, onto something else. So what I'm gonna do is dust off my cabinets and start priming because I just need to step away from this right now because it has been a morning trying to get this figured out and then to have them come on and realize that they don't work. It's a really big bummer, but it looked really good for what it was. So anyways, I, yeah, like I said, I already went ahead and cut the bigger ones, but I'm just gonna pause there and go ahead and start priming the bookshelves. guys it's the next day I figured out the door situation for one side I think I just had to buy new wood for the other side unfortunately but I didn't do all this work just to kind of like slap it together at the end so I want to make sure it's right we're not gonna look too close you guys there won't be any close-ups of the door but I did my best that I could with plywood and then I just did the edge banding again so that's my tip you guys is cut your doors put them on before <laughs> unless you guys are perfect but put them on before you do the edge banding because the door that I edge banded I now can't use that, so it's kind of a waste of materials in two senses. In two cents, senses. Anyways, what's going on? I don't know. Okay, so now we are obviously, you know, I don't want them to be just plain old doors. So what I bought was this, you can buy just these super thin pine boards. You can actually find them smaller too, they're cut. But I found long eight foot ones, which is perfect because I have to do four doors. So now what I basically want to do, I think it's called styles and something else. I'll put it on the screen but it's basically when you have them on the doors, that little detail that's kind of on the sides and top. I am so distracted right now, there's a baby outside. Okay, anyways, so I'm just gonna cut it down to size and put them on the sides and the tops and then that'll just add more detail and then cock it all in and make it look really good and then we can put the knobs on, but I'll wait for that until we paint them. But that's it, you guys. Like Once I do the doors and put this on and then obviously fix the other ones, the bookshelves are ready to be painted. So that is so exciting. So I wanna hurry up and do that because I've decided on a color and we'll talk about that next. So let's get this on 
and then get to the fun part. <laughs> I mean, it's all been fun, but you know what I mean. Okay, you guys, let's talk paint colors. So I actually, which this is unlike me, I don't normally do paint samples. I'm normally like, I like that color, let's do it. Also, if you hear a tornado, that's my daughter's playing Barbies. I normally just pick my paint color and I'm good to go, but I did want to get some samples because I really want to avoid this being a dungeon. I want it to be cozy, library, again, that regal, sophisticated feeling. I almost want it to feel a little bit manly, if that makes sense, but still feminine. So all of that put together in a paint. So I felt like it was best if I got some samples. So I did already put all of the paint samples as well as the chips on the wall in the corner because again, I don't want it to feel like a dungeon. So I put them in one of the darkest spots of the room where it really doesn't get any light because I wanted to show what appears like black or just way too dark and rule that out. And I felt like that was just like a really good starting point for me. So that being said, the charcoal blue is a gorgeous color. If you liked my French braid in the bathroom but you wanted it to be more navy as opposed to black, Charcoal Blue by Sherwin-Williams was beautiful, but I won't be using it. I then also got Mineral Gray, which is what, when you color match my inspiration photo, my friend did this for me on Instagram, if you color match my inspiration photo, Sherwin-Williams suggested Mineral Gray, and it is pretty close to what I was looking for, but I think it's so interesting. The color that I really like is like a blue gray with a hint of teal, and this is missing the teal. So, I don't know, I liked it, when I just had my two samples of charcoal blue and mineral gray, I liked this one a lot more. It's lighter, it still has that rich feeling, but it just was still missing a little bit of that like historicalness that I want. So then I picked up another color and this is Distance. This one reminds me of the color that I did in my sister's nursery. If you haven't seen that, I'll link that down below. But that color is so beautiful and calming, but it feels a little too modern. So I'm still, still not quite there. So sorry to my husband who said I was wasting money on samples in a loving way, of course, because he's lovely. But I actually don't think I'm gonna do any of those samples. And I went and just picked up a bunch of paint swatches this time because I was having such a hard time choosing and I didn't want to pick a hundred of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. I'm gonna go ahead and hang them up and then we'll see what we like. Hey you guys, I showed those three paint samples that were left over to my husband and he said, are you playing a trick on me? They're the same color. <laughs> he said they're the same color. <laughs> I said they're completely different colors. Look at them. And then he laughed harder because they were different. Anyways, I ended up picking a paint color. I ended up picking Waterloo. Also hilarious story, I was just hanging out with my friend this morning and by hanging out with me watching baby toddlers at the co-op for our homeschool at our church. And she was like, oh, I'm gonna be painting my hallway. And she said the color Waterloo. And I said, oh my gosh, I literally just bought that paint last night. So great minds think alike. And you guys, I am so nervous. I have no idea if I'm gonna love it or if I might scream, but we shall soon find out. So let's go ahead and get this on the bookcase. You guys are so scared. Brushstroke, are we ready?
Okay, you guys, the bookshelves are about 95, maybe 98% done. I still just have to do the doors on the front of the other side, but I just need a moment for my husband to be home to help me with that because plywood is heavy, especially three quarter inch plywood. The bookshelves are looking so good, you guys, though. It looks like they were always here, which is exactly what I wanted. The color is beautiful. <laughs> Basically, I couldn't decide between blue and green, so I did teal, <laughs> and I love it. It has like a gray, blue, teal color. It feels old world librarian, which is exactly what I wanted, so, ooh! But I feel like I can't fully enjoy them because all I can see in the mirror is the messy room, and so I wanna get everything cleared out of here so I can paint the room, you guys. I do wanna add molding, but I feel like I might wanna paint first this time. Normally I add the molding, then I paint, but I don't know, I just wanna see this room colored, so let's just clear it out and then see what happens next. So I was gonna clear the room out, but then I just realized that I don't have that much paint left and I'd have to get more anyways. So I figured let's just paint a wall and see what it looks like. different this room already feels and again I'm just so thankful it just feels like this is how it was meant to be these bookshelves insane you guys I did get the doors on I ran out of trim and the caulk is drying so that's why they're not fully painted yet but they're on and that just feels good because the last little bit is the easiest part so thank goodness but you guys I am loving this color again it is called Waterloo by Sherwin Williams and it is a beautiful teal blue but more on the blue side and has a bit of a gray undertone as well and it just reads beautifully in the bright like when the sun is on it which is what hits the bookshelves more you definitely see more of the teal whereas in the darker corners you see more of the gray blue just a really beautiful color it's the moodiness that I wanted and I'm just so excited I love the way the headers look I love how I added the detail about the fireplace and just how the trim all looks and it looks like one cohesive unit and my sister came over and she saw these already and she said it looks like they were always here and I'm just like that's exactly what I wanted thank you so you guys this room has come so far but again we still got so much more to do I'm gonna add some wall molding to this room to give it just even more elevation you guys I'm just like give me all of the wall treatment I love it and then we've got to put the drapes back up I do need to hem them I need to obviously finish painting the bookshelves we need to style the bookshelves and then I have some fun new furniture that I'm gonna be showing you guys next week and bringing in here we're gonna kind of figure out what layout we want best a new to me coffee table lots of fun things you guys thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it. It was quite the process, quite the transformation for this one. I fit a lot in and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So give it a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the color. Let me know what you think how it's going so far. You guys are the best. You guys are amazing. I love my community and I will see you guys next Sunday at 2 p.m. Bye guys. For those of you who watched the whole video, thank you. You guys get a little sneak peek at next week. So I'm going to do thick and chunky chair rail because the moldings, the moldings, the trim around the window is really thick and our baseboards are thick. So I'm gonna go thick. So I got this from Lowe's. Also Lowe's has the best trim. Home Depot don't even waste your time, honestly. They barely have anything. But I wanna do the trim about the same height as we did the countertops. And then, oh, don't scratch anything. And we're gonna have that go all the way around the room. And then I'm also going to do little, um, well not little, but big box molding rectangles, tall and little on the bottom. So that'll be super fun, you guys. I gotta get to cutting. No rest for the wicked. <laughs> Just kidding, I love it so much. <laughs>